Well, hello. Welcome back to The Greater You. It's good to see everyone today. As we have been talking about the last few days, we're working on walking through our model of the seven areas of wellness. And we've covered a few of them so far. Today, we're going to be talking about the category of mind. This is a very important category. Uh, all seven areas have great importance to our overall well-being. Obviously, the mind is a place we spend quite a bit of time, right? We spend um, our days thinking and processing, and our mind is, it has a continual you know, chatter going on. So we're going to talk about three ways specifically to help you improve the quality of your mind and improve your thought environment. The first one is this positivity idea. I think there's a lot of interesting information you can find on this out there. And certainly we've learned that, you know, the positive thought environment is not some sort of unrealistic type of positivity we're looking for. In fact, the research on optimism is really interesting. People who are optimistic are actually better at identifying problems compared to pessimists. So that's kind of an interesting thing that maybe is counterintuitive, but people that are being optimistic or having a positive thought environment tend to have a more open mind and they tend to see, uh, even like literally in, in the science of observation, they can identify objects uh, around them faster than people who are in kind of a negative closed headspace. So optimism is not some sort of recipe for head in the sand, pretend optimism. It's actually a very real, actionable thought environment that we can create of uh, positivity. The difference between an optimist and a pessimist is that an optimist looks at a problem, identifies it, and then asks the question, how can I work with this? How can I solve this? How can I overcome this? What resources can I find to help me overcome this challenge? So a positive thought environment is actually a really constructive, proactive place. So work on that one. That's a great mindset tool. Our coaches can also help you with that. We've got a lot of tools to help people create a positive thought environment. Second one here is developing a growth mindset, which in future videos, we'll do specific videos that are more in length and in depth with each of these concepts. Today, we're doing just a brief overview to get you thinking about these things and looking about how you can apply these things in your life right away. So the growth mindset is a famous mindset. It's uh, getting a lot more uh, notoriety in the research and literature nowadays. And it, according to some of the research I've read, it's actually the correct mindset. I love that idea that the growth mindset is the correct mindset. In fact, I think it was uh, Dr. Lori Santos that I heard say that recently in, in one of her podcasts. But I totally agree with that. The growth mindset is the correct way to, to think about things. What is growth mindset? Growth mindset is taking a look at things from a, a, the position of how, what can I learn from this situation? Growth mindset is tied in with things like resilience and grit and so forth, where when we have challenges, per, a person practicing growth mindset will look at those challenges as an opportunity to adjust, adapt, grow, try harder, um, learn a new skill, whatever it is. So growth mindset is awesome. It opens up the mind and frees you from the shackles of that closed mind environment. So growth mindset's huge. The practical way to do this is look at uh, mistakes that go on throughout the day as opportunities to learn. What can I learn from that mistake? What can I do to adapt? You know, if you get a bad report from a boss or something, what can I do to improve and, and take that and put some action to it? And then the growth mindset really helps us move forward on that. So that's a point number two for today. Growth mindset, huge part of having a healthy mind. The third concept this is one of my favorite. It's staying curious and hungry for knowledge. This is so important to have a healthy mind. A stagnant mind isn't really a good environment to hang out in. Our minds are designed to constantly be growing and learning and adapting. So staying curious and inviting curiosity into your life, a hunger for knowledge is a really great way to keep your mind healthy. You know, if you're in a, in a lull or in a doldrum, go find some interesting books, do some research, see what kind of book list people are recommending, load up your Audible or whatever and start listening or reading books. I actually recommend reading as well as listening. I do both. We all probably do a whole lot of Audible. 
um, and other things like that to, you know, just listen to books because we're all so busy. But staying curious and hungry is really also uh, a very helpful thing for your overall mi uh, mindset and well-being in your in, in having a healthy mind. So stay curious, stay hungry, look for opportunities to learn, grow, uh, professional conferences, pick a topic you're curious about, look for it, sign up. Someone's got a webinar on it. If not, I'll make one for you. And, you know, get curious about stuff and go out there and find the information you're looking for. Obviously, in today's day and age, when you're working your curiosity and hunger for knowledge, doing some fact checking, even with this video, I invite you to go check out the research on all three of these concepts. You'll find there's a host of good research on this stuff. We're not blowing smoke. We're telling you, we're telling you facts here that really do help people have a healthy mind. But, you know, doing some fact checking is a good idea with your curiosity and hunger for knowledge. So give these three concepts a try, work on that optimistic, positive mind environment, and also work on developing that growth mindset. And all the while, definitely stay curious and hungry for knowledge. So have a great and healthy day, and we'll talk to you soon.